Welcome back to the Halloween special, my friends. Today we're looking at a film that my mom actually recommended that I watch, The Omen. This was directed by the late, great Richard Donner. Rest in peace. He is well known for directing the Superman movies as well as the Goonies, the Lethal Weapon films. He came out with The Omen first in 1976. A lot of people argue that this may have been the movie that nagged him the job for Superman altogether. And this one stars Gregory Peck, one of the most skilled actors who ever lived. He plays an American diplomat named Robert who adopts a young boy named Damien who's played by Harvey Stevens when his wife Kathy delivers a stillborn child. And after Damien's first nanny ominously hangs herself at the church, Father Brennan warns Robert that Damien will kill Catherine's unborn child, which I should note that Catherine wants to get rid of, and Robert is vehemently against this. But shortly thereafter, Brennan dies when he's impaled at the church, and Catherine miscarries when Damien pushes her off a balcony. And as more people around this little boy die, Robert investigates Damien's background and realizes that his adopted son may be the Antichrist. Maybe? Nah, he totally is. There's three sixes on his scalp. Spoiler, it's not a birthmark. But man, I don't even know where to start with digesting the omen because this was such a huge hit in the mid-70s. The Exorcist had had its premiere three years prior and it was scaring people out of the movie theater back then even. And the omen, I think, is a good psychological horror movie to follow in its footsteps. Dare I say, it's freaking great. And a lot of that has to do with Richard Donner's direction. And you can see why movie studios were trying to land him for bigger projects like a Superman, like a Goonies. You gotta keep in mind that Richard Donner was an up-and-coming talent in 1976. He was looking to prove himself with something here, and The Omen may have been that something. The way he directs his actors is flawless. The cinematography really makes you feel so claustrophobic, like you're trapped in this situation. And there's some really genius framing and some unbelievable symbolism. If you look at the way he's framing stuff early on in The Omen, you'll notice a lot of super clever Easter eggs, like shooting this young boy in front of a fireplace. I mean, if that's not the big hint, I don't know what is. While keeping on the topic of the acting, it is all true tremendous across the board. Young Harvey Stevens had a tough task here. This kid was only five years old at the time of principal photography, and he is phenomenal. You could just look in this kid's eyes and the way he's smiling, and it just feels so unsettling, like imminent dread is upon you, which of course is helped by a tremendous musical score. This music got the late, great Jerry Goldsmith his only Oscar win, and honestly, if any one of this legend's scores was going to win a golden statue, it was going to be this one. And if you listen to the music... That goes without saying, because it is creepy, it is eerie, it is any other adjective you want to throw into the mix there. It checks all the boxes, and Goldstein's music is just pitch perfect. It's superb. I think all of these actors in this movie, Harvey Stevens, absolutely wonderful. Patrick Troughton as Father Brennan, I think, is really, really amazing here. He acts as a great warning light for these parents who are just completely oblivious to this. Gregory Peck's character is way too busy with his job. Lee Remick's character is way too paranoid for her own good. And it almost seems like he's the voice of reason in all this before he gets absolutely murdered. And that's another thing that I really, really respect about Donner's direction, even though the kills in this are brutal, he doesn't have to overly rely on the brutality of everything. You're not going to see a whole bunch of gore. You're not going to see eyes popping out of skulls or anything like that. It's all in what he chooses to show us, and then we can fill in the gaps with our imagination as to what the end result actually looks like. That's the terror. Again, not a lot of people are going to find the omen all that scary. A lot of people are going to think that the family drama is just way too soap opera-esque. And it shows. When this movie first came out, this movie got incredibly mixed reviews from critics. But then as the years went by and people started examining the movie more and more, it just got so much more critical appraise. So much so that they made a remake in 2006, which I dare not talk about. Please do not go and watch that remake. Go and watch the original classic. Everybody is just so on top of their game. Richard Donner's direction is absolutely incredible. Unless I forget... Gregory Peck in this movie is unbelievable. He's given a lot of meaty dialogue in here, very similar to when he was Atticus Finch. He carries a lot of this movie on his back. And it's performances like this, performances like he had in To Kill a Mockingbird, 
This just goes to show you why Gregory Peck was so damn talented. Because it's a very subtle performance for the first half or so. He's very much on the defense. But once he starts realizing that this kid is bad news and that he's killing all of his dearly beloved left and right, he just goes on an absolute tear. And he doesn't care who gets in his way. He doesn't care if his job gets in jeopardy or anything like that. He's going to take this thing on full throttle. And on, you know, Gregory Peck, man, <laughs> I have a lot more respect for him for taking this role, especially in a movie like this. I mean, it feels like the kid very much could have overshadowed the adults in this, and they could have very much made the kid so over the top and everything like that. But no, there's just perfect subtleties in here. There's perfect dosages of just dread coming from this kid. And there are perfect dosages of frantic energy from Gregory Peck to perfectly complement all of this. And as a supernatural horror film, Richard Donner did a damn good job with this. I do have one little nitpick, though. I did mention that the wife, Catherine, gets pregnant around the midway point of this movie, and she wants to go get an abortion. I felt like that little subplot felt a little bit forced. Honestly, I feel like if you eliminated that element from this whole entire big picture, it wouldn't have really changed much. That might have been just an added element to basically give you the moral dilemma of, oh... Do we want to protect this kid that she has? And I don't really feel like this movie needed that in order to be effective. But you know what? As it stands, The Omen is still really damn strong. Gregory Peck shows you why he's one of the greatest actors who ever lived. Harvey Stevens, with very minimal dialogue, lest I forget, is just so unbelievably scary. I'm gonna give The Omen an A. I realize that it may be very tough for a lot of you to suspend your disbelief when watching this, but if you've never seen it, I would absolutely recommend giving it a shot. Let me know what you thought of it if you've seen it down in the comments section below. I love discussing all things movies and entertainment. I love discussing scary movies, especially through the month of October. And you know, getting to interact with you guys makes things all the more fun for me. So if you're a new viewer, do consider smashing that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up on your way out. That would be a tremendous favor. It really, really helps the channel and its growth. And of course, stay tuned for more exciting content hitting my channel very, very soon. My next entry in the Halloween playlist, we're going to be jumping about 30 years ahead chronologically. I'm very, very excited to announce that my buddy Luke Ponto requested that I talk about this one on the channel this month. We're going to be looking at Scott Derrickson's Sinister. Kind of as a follow-up to the Black Phone earlier on this year. But guys, thank you all so, so very much for tuning in. And with all that being said, Back Talk, commence. Yeah.